All right, so we're back in the shop with the 62. I've uh, been working on a little bit yesterday and ordering a bunch of parts and everything, trying to get everything together and get this truck going. So uh, the latest thing we were working on was trying to get the motor played in. So uh, we finalized that yesterday. And so we trimmed it down, make it look a little better in the truck and then we made these plates to weld to the frame and then I've got to triangulate this other side and then I'll have to put a um a bar in there to to control the forwards and backwards movement because the motor plate uh obviously helps with torsional uh movement so um that was just what I landed on was doing a motor plate. Um, I just think it makes it easier. And I don't know, that's, that's just the way I decided to proceed. Um, I've got the LS6 intake still, but I was looking it up and it looks like the Trailblazer actually made more horsepower than the LS6 and I have both. So, um, and you, you can run a larger throttle body on the four bolt versus the LS6 which is a three bolt. Um, the LS2 uh, car intake was a four bolt, but I don't have one of those, so I'm gonna use what I have. Um, I had the saltinator mount. I don't know if it was on here last time. That was from another build years ago. I'd actually held on to it all this time for this truck. So, and you notice it has these uh, spacers here for the different spacing. So with that said, I'm gonna go to the F body spacing uh, because I've got this ATI balancer that Michael gave me. So uh, why not use it? And uh, with what I'm getting to for the intercooler, I actually be mounted underneath kind of a horizontal position. And then the three inch will be coming up between the balancer and the fans of the radiator coming up and turning into the intake. So uh, the tighter accessory drive I can get, uh, the more room I'll have here, which this thing had a uh, six cylinder, inline six, you know, and they're, they're very long. So uh, now with having this uh, further back and everything, I think we'll have plenty of room. I hope so. I hope the radiator doesn't take up all this space. I don't think it will. I don't think there's any chance, but um, like I say, I've got the ATI balancer and I've got a water pump uh, that'll work as well. So um, I got the adapter to go from five inch to four inch. Uh, another thing I noticed, I don't know a lot about these trucks, but my buddy does. And he was over yesterday looking at the heater setup. He was saying that he thought that these heater hoses poking through was actually <laughs> maybe something someone had done because the these plates are blocked off and that gives you fresh air intake and then that blows it into the cab on certain models um but again i don't know a lot about it and i didn't know you know i don't remember what the under the dash looks like on the truck but this one has like a recirculating type heater um so which which works out good for me because number one it's already in there number two uh i don't have all this stuff out here for the heater box and i do like i don't ac is not really that big of a concern for me but heat i do not like being cold so um i'm, I'm thankful that it has a heater in there and then i'll just have to uh, route my heater hoses accordingly um i don't know if i showed this last time because obviously the truck wasn't on the ground but um so i made a plate right here that bolts to the firewall and the factory holes and then allows a, a dual hole um, brake mesh cylinder uh, because this truck actually had a hydraulic clutch surprisingly and the the clutch and the brakes shared the same reservoir and if you had a failure in any of those two you didn't have a brake so um, this is a, it's an aluminum dual reservoir mass cylinder 
and um, a proportioning valve, and I'd redone all the brake lines. I, again, I'd done all this years ago, um, but the plate um, fits it on the dash and locates everything, and you know it's crude, but it works. So you know that 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 fixed that issue. Uh, here's the top side of the, with the Trailblazer manifold, how well it fits in there. Uh, we got the shift linkage hooked up yesterday. So um, this was a three on the tree, so it's got the two tabs that come out that go up and down for your shifting. Um, and then this little rod and hind joints goes down in there. And it has its own arm that attaches to the 80 and then you just kind of bend and manipulate the rod where you need it, put the shifter in the truck all the way up, and then so that allows the inside to look factory, and then you can utilize the shifter so you don't have to do it. You know, it's $50 for this shift rod kit, and now, you know, I have a shifter. So I like that, that style. I've done it a few times. Um, let's see, so we got the, again, this is a Fowler Speed Log, the T6, it was actually on the, it was on the Red 2500, and then this is a Jose Billet S480, so that's what we'll be running. Uh, let's see, we ordered a bunch of stuff for it, the 9 and 3 8 um, has proven to be problematic, but... It's really a cool rear end. I counted it, I think, I think it's like a 280 gear ratio or something. Um, but I started researching it again and scared myself because I wanted to make sure that a nine inch center section bolted in there and it's 31 spline and all that stuff. So I'm still not 100% on if that's gonna work or not. If, I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna do about it. I, they did make a 350 gear ratio for this nine and three eighths, but it's uh, kind of difficult to find. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to use the housing and axles and all and put a nine inch center in it. Um, one thing is the yoke is not a 1350 yoke. So I've ordered a 1350 yoke because the drive shaft I have is 1350. I've already taken it to my drive shaft guy, Mike. And as soon as I get the yoke in, he wants me to get it and get him the measurement. And then um, he's going to make my drive shaft. Uh, we worked on the fuel tank yesterday. Uh, still don't know what the tank's out of, but I did find the part number at my dad's shop. The box was surprisingly still there. Um, the wood bed, I'm still researching that out, but um, th these wood bed kits are very expensive. I'm, I was kind of surprised at how expensive uh, the wood bed kit is and I, you know, kind of looked at some of the DIY stuff and everything. So I think I'm just going to um, buy, find, a, find the cheapest kit I can find, um, you know, and, and go that route because I don't, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time figuring reinventing the wheel figuring out trying to get this thing put together and i don't really know i've never done a wood bed so i don't know how it all goes and works i'm sure it's not complicated once i see it and figure it out but you know it's just something that's got to get done uh there's the so here's the fuel tank so we've got a, a 535 pump in here and then on um, this tank's tank actually has a basket in there for the everything to sit in. Um, I had to drill uh, this in there for the, the, the wires to pass through, um, which is kind of surprising why they didn't have that. But So it's got a vent, there's my return, there's my supply, and this is as much for me. So uh, when I wipe these off accidentally, moving it around, I can come back and watch the video and see how I had it set up. I uh, gotta put the sending unit in. <clears throat> it's gonna have to be shortened. I'll get that in and then start uh, mounting the mounting it in here. Um, we got our some exhaust pipe to finish out the exhaust system. 
I got the muffler, but it was way, way too big. It won't fit under the truck, so I gotta take that back. Here's my five to four inch reducer for the turbo and uh, the fuel rails I like to get for the truck intakes and fuel hose and valve springs and all that good stuff in here, my inlet air temp sensor. Um, then we'll come over here and we'll look at the nine inch stuff we got going on. So there's the LS6 intake with the three bolt. So as you can tell, it's a much smaller throttle blade. So this is a double rib nine inch case. Uh, this is the one I'm gonna run. So it's got your two ribs here and then your ribs across up here. This is the housing I like to run because again, uh, when I was younger, um, I had a single rib case like this and it actually pulled the pinion out of the housing and that was with a, I don't remember which engine it was, a 408 or something, but it might have been an 8.2 deck motor, I don't remember. Here's our carrier. <clears throat> I got the carrier bearings for it. And then uh, gear ratio. So I've been racking numbers again. One of my problems is I just sit there and calculate and look at the numbers and just really get lost in it. And I've done this a long time and I just always get in this entrapment of just, you know, I wanted to run a 373 initially, I thought. And then with the 28 inch tire and the 4L80 and everything, it's just going to be turning more rpms than i want cruising at 80 so i think i think the 325 is going to be the gear ratio i'm going to end up with uh, because i think a 275 60 on the truck is going to look right and with the 325 i mean it just i think it'll be turning the rpms i want and i'll have plenty of power to to get it moving so after lots and lots of calculations and looking at it and everything and then i even i even did a comparison with my cadillac so i ran the numbers on the cadillac with the six speed and the 373 gear in it of course it has a lot shorter of a tire which comes into play and it was around 80 miles an hour and that one was around 2180 rpm or something like that so i think the 325 is going to put me around where i want to be for cruising uh, the other reason I say that is because uh, the turkey rod run is coming up in November and and I told my children that um, if we can get this thing together um, that we'll take it down there. So we go to the turkey rod run almost every year. There have been a few years I've missed, but um, we've been taking the children down there and they really enjoy it. So. They've, they've been helping me on it. Um, they helped me make this list here. And, it, and it's funny to see, uh, you know, the, from dictation to her riding like a, a fuel filled neck and then a cold, cold side parking <laughs> and then a, a dry shaft. So anyway, I thought it was funny. But this is our, our long list it's not all inclusive so i wanted them just to see what all goes into taking one from where it was to what it's going to be to get it running and um they were they were pretty surprised by how long the list is and i didn't want to tell them that this is not everything and that, that needs to happen there's a lot you know in my mind that didn't make it to the list but you know like i told them some things on here uh can take 10 minutes some things on here can take 10 hours so uh, they learned yesterday that doing this motor plate took a long time to trim everything fit it take it on and off uh, i actually had them make the templates to lay out these metal plates that we welded on and we cut all those freehand and i welded them on and you know I taught them how to make templates, showed them the thought process, and I'm not a very good teacher, but I really want my children uh, to learn how to do this. 
and uh, nobody taught me. Uh, my, well, my papa showed me and taught me a lot, you know, but beyond that, once I really got into this type of stuff, you know, it was pretty much self-taught. So <clears throat> I want to I want to be able to show them and teach them how to do this stuff and so they can know what all goes into this. And, uh, again, they were pretty surprised, you know, by how long it took. But I, I think they enjoyed making the templates and, and then seeing uh, from the looking at it, making it what we need with the template making the fit the template fit and i told them the template needs to fit the best you can and then we'll lay it out on plate still mark it out cut it out freehand and then um just the whole process to make it fit so that's pretty interesting uh again the shifter we got the shifter in and so now it's it's in park right there i think I think actually the shifter needs to go up a little higher. I think I can only get it down to uh, drive and then third, which, I mean, I don't plan on manually shifting it all the way down into first and coming back up. So, I mean, it, it's probably fine where it is, but I, I'll see. Because I, I had my son up here holding the shifter in the location it needed while I was uh, lining up everything with the shifter. Uh, another thing is the wheels and tires. I don't really know um, what's going to look good on it. Again, I want a 275-60 on the back on a 10-inch wheel. And on the front, I mean, that's a very short tire, and I'm, I, the lift's not all the way down. But um, I don't know that I want to do a 275 front and rear. I kind of like the front to be a little shorter, narrower tire but I don't want it to be unusable. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, not a skinny front runner. You know, I want a tire that I can turn the truck and have good braking uh, capabilities still. And you don't, and you just don't have that with skinny. Skinny, a skinny is not a good idea to run on the street, regardless of the ones that do it. It's just, it's not safe. I know someone that got hurt pretty bad doing that. And I want, I want a good sized tire on the front. I want it to look good, uh, you know, in stance and everything, sitting down at ride height. So um, I've got some different tires I'm, I just want to put on here to see what it looks like and play around with some tire sizes uh, and obviously get the bed on here sitting properly. It's just driving me crazy with the with the front being down so low because it's not on the cross frame the cross members not on the thing so i want to get the the bed needs to be here for you know mock-up purposes and everything so i need to get the bed you know it seems like that oh that's the last minute thing you can do later but i really kind of need the bed so i can see where everything's going to be for my fuel tank where the battery's going to go <laughs> i'm thinking i want to put the battery right here and then I thought about using like a jerry can right here um, and having the fill neck in it. So then, you know, you just fill that up. Because uh, I've got a couple of these neat uh, jerry cans that I've gotten over the years at uh, estate sales and stuff. So I think, I think it'd kind of be cool if I took one of these and put it in there and then made the... See, this one already has a cap for it instead of the fill so I could have that removable and then have that set in the bed and then just fill the truck from this you know and then it would look I don't know we'll try it and see what it looks like because I don't know where I would put in the fill neck um, I thought about making the tail light fold out and having it behind the tail light but obviously I don't want to put a door or anything on the bedside but Either the tail light or just put the mount one and secure one of those in the bed right here and then just fill it from there and have the neck go down and into my tank. So anyway, so just want to give an update on where we're at on this. Uh, a lot of work to be done and, and now my job, um, I don't have as much time to work on them as I used to. So I know typically it would already be running by now. Uh, I think I think normally about a 
couple of days time with me is enough to get one from how this truck was to running and driving but I just don't have the time to work on them anymore like I used to so <clears throat> it's going to take a while and it's going to be painful for you and for me more painful for me because I want to get it you know that's all I think about and I want to get it together and running and driving and take the kids to Daytona in it because I think that'd be uh, really special but anyway that's the update for now